There we go. That is better. Like flashback. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> a dwarven barkeep you don't get more uh generic than that dwarven barkeep champion that's very clearly uh kate and kayleen <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so when James first announced this game and I first got in on it, um, you know, I started trying to come up with a character and I was like, you know what, I'm going to be an ancestry Oracle halfling because it doesn't really get more random than that. And then when he told us about the character of tables, I was like, all right, I'll roll my character. And I came up with the character, um, Tefram Kuhim. He is a, uh, fetchling, uh, battle dancer, uh, swashbuckler, um, Still trying to learn a little bit about this character, see what he's about, but uh, I will forever be a little bitter because when Adam rolled his character, lo and behold, he pulled an Oracle Halfling. So Adam is essentially playing the character that uh, that I had come up with. Damn you. Lo and behold. <laughs> oh, it gets better. It gets better. Yeah, so I got the, the Oracle Halfling. Uh, I did change up on the uh, the curse, so it was the exact thing. So, Ben, in the future, you are able to, to still play that character. Awesome. I cannot wait for someone to meet Lauren the Halfling. He's great. <laughs> um, you know, uh, you know, I've added a little bit of backstory with my guy so far where so, you know, we had the a land called Low, and then across the water, there was a place with some other probably cool fantasy name. Uh, but we elected to change it to Behold. So that way, you know, there's a, there's a nice island in between Low and Behold. <laughs> um, so my character is going to be from that island. Um, I think uh, the, the idea is it's going to be kind of a an island not a lot of people go to. It's small. No, you know. Not not on every map, maybe and type of thing. Uh, the interesting thing about the island, though, is when 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 children are born, they're not given names. They're just called based on what side of the island they were born. So for now, you'll 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 meet Lo because he was born on the I believe it's the, the eastern side of the island. And the idea is that as they grow up, they they earn their name either through gate deeds or through common things. So some people get their name early. You are. Uh, food maker. <laughs> so, so question: When a parent walks out of their house on this side of the island and they shout for their kid and they just say "lo," do, do like fifty halfling children just come running in? Um. So it's interesting, right? It's it, it's the idea of it takes a village. So, 
you know, when, when they yell low, usually it's the inflection. The you know, the person who's calling, it kind of tells you who it is. Um, there are rumors that on this island, sometimes like crazy things will happen where you know an elf and a human will have a, a child, and it'll end up being a dwarf. So that's something <laughs> about the the island that they don't quite know about. It's a rumor. We don't know if it's true yet, though. But uh, you know. And, and James, obviously we spent the oh, money on, on good things, uh, not random stuff that has nothing to do with, you know, <laughs> the campaign. You know. uh, they can't hear you on stream, yeah. James. Yeah, yeah um, go into OBS you. and just make sure that your, your audio is unmuted. We can hear you. Let's see if Cody can hear you. Nope. Nope. Technical difficulties. It was like the same problem that uh, John was having. Yeah, I was running into the same issues with my Abomination Vault session one. Oh boy. <laughs> so my character, right? Okay. So I've decided to play uh, a cat folk. Um, her name is Ma uh, Mana Karu. She is a sorcerer and she's fame bounded. So, um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how to explain her, her race and stuff, but you'll find out what she does. <laughs> <laughs> you'll find out her uh, her skills and whatnot um so for um i have a little background thing i guess i can look at all right there it is so she is a trainee basically she's a sorcerer trainee um she is also technically a sailor she has a sell she's not like a you know she doesn't do the sailing part she just does the navigation um <clears throat> but she is also very obsessed with finding the killer of her, her her mother's killer her mother did die five years ago um people thought there was a stroke but it's not so she's with her father right now um following leads which is that led them to this new world um, that James created. <laughs> well, actually, She's, we mm, all created this. Oh, sorry. We all created this world. Um, <laughs> it was very random. So, uh, she is very curious as a cat. So, she <laughs> will get into a lot of trouble. Um, she is very dedicated to her mission. So, um, you cannot, like... She, she has to keep going. Through, to her path of trying to find her uh, mother's killer. And um, she can be a bit, bit snobbish, too, because uh, she did grow up in a kind of wealthy family. Um, so, basically, after, like, she, after she finished school, her and her father went off on an adventure to go find her mother's killer. Um... She, like, physical-wise, she is very, she's in good shape. She works out. Uh, she's average height, and she does have red fur, uh, red hair, and she does have one yellow and one red eye. 
um, she, the, the, you kind of imagine why later. It's like, oh, that's why she has red and yellow eyes. Anyway, she grew up in a middle class with her family. Uh, all her siblings did die at childbirth. So she is the only child and the only child that remains. She did have a relationship with her um, professor. Uh, he's 14 years older than her. And because of some issues, they broke it off. And most likely it was due to her father, you know, probably punching him or something. You know, you know what fathers do, I guess. <laughs> Wow. Uh, wow. Now we just go around <laughs> punching things. Punching on things. <laughs> like, <"Rawr." laughs> Hold on. You look like you uh, have a face on, that needs punching. Yes. <laughs> so, basically, she just. She doesn't really use her spells as much as she wants to because she is forced to just. <sighs> learn by listening and looking and not doing so hopefully now that she has finished her training she is she's free to do magic now and it's going to be chaos and it's going to be spontaneous and random <laughs> so it's going to be really cool like what kind of spell is this oh crap <laughs> Now, did you oh, say? Yes, that is her. Did you say chaos magic? <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I, <laughs> that awesome. is her. That is sorry if it's long, but that is um, Mana, and she will destroy you. The end. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, shit! You're level twenty. You, that you just start at level twenty. You're done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go ahead and um, switch over to to Philip. Give a quick right. thing about your character. So, uh, my character doesn't know his name, um, specifically because he is an amnesiac. He uh, he is not aware of pretty much any of his recent past. Um, he is in very good shape. He's very athletic and acrobatic. Um, he knows how to handle himself. He knows how to handle weaponry. Um, and uh, the one of the key things he knows is that somewhere in his past, he was a worshiper, devoutee of the uh, Galarian deity Irori, uh, because he, he when he, uh, the first thing he remembers is uh, when he came to, or what have you, is that uh, he was wearing a silver holy symbol of the deity. Um, and uh, is he, he, his body understands how to flow well, He's, uh, he's a very physical character, um, and uh, but he doesn't remember anything, and there's going to be a lot of surprises with this character um, in, a, in a very cinematic fashion, I think. Well, I'm looking forward to it, because um, I think that it's going to be very fun as a as a GM, to um, throw things at you. Don't worry, I plan to throw things back. Yes, I, and I expect it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, right now I'd like to move over to um, the next stage of what we were doing. So, you know, we went through the character creations, um, figured out back, you know, their backstories and everything, and some of the backstories are long and lavish. The others are still quite unknown, so it'll be a, a great journey, I think. But what I'm going to do is switch over, and you'll see this is the world 
that we randomly chose based on um, the players rolling um, D100s. So basically we rolled a D100 and a couple of other die to determine how this map was going to be generated. And we ended up with this. It is the first time I've seen you know, used a map like this. So it's just a very large um, you know, ring of an island, so to speak. And like you mentioned before, oops, I went too far. There's lo and behold. And that's where um, Adam's character is from right there dab in the middle now the interesting thing is that this land um, it they're un it's unknown they don't know where it came from um, some half of the party has actually grew up here well one knows that they grew up here the other one doesn't remember anything um, and a couple of them not so much they just happen upon this place so no one knows why it's here, you know, and and the reasons behind it. So there's going to be a whole lot of questions and um, hunting for the right answers uh, to find out the key to this this new land. So in this uh, whole campaign, the most of well half of the players are going to know about Galarian because they actually came from Galarian. But this is something new, and it's not on any map, from at least from their um, perspective. Does anyone want to um, jump in here and um, and add their two cents about this new world that we created? Well, one of the, the big things for Low being that where he's from and, and kind of the, the naming convention, how you kind of earn that name, is he's really put off doing a lot in his life kind of staring off at the stars, kind of trying to learn about that because he knows that there's this big, giant something in the middle. He's not quite sure what it is, but that's where he's going to get. And that's where he's going to find, you know, his, his, his mission. <laughs> Wait, does Lowe also feel that pull kind of towards the center of the ring as well? Yes. Nice, yeah. Tephram is definitely... If he looks out into that water and he sees how dark it is in that shadow, yeah, he's definitely drawn towards it as well. Uh, Tephram isn't from uh, Gia, the islands that we created. Uh, he's actually from, uh, he's a Middle East uh, refugee who's been living in Talador for the last uh, 15 years, who somehow ended up there. So, yeah, how he ended up here and what the hell is going on in the center of that, right? He's definitely, uh, definitely got a mystery he wants to solve. If only someone knew how to sail. <laughs> <laughs> if only we had someone with a sailor's background. Well, someone could have rolled for it. <laughs> what a coincidence. It's all coming together. Well, James, is, is that possibly something where... Uh, uh, I know one of the aspects of this campaign is uh, varied and frequent uh, visitors to the campaign, right? That is very true. Yeah. Yes. yes. Or did we, uh, or did that change? No, no, there will be, uh, from time to time, there will be some special guests. So that could easily be, hey, look, here's our new, um, you know, See, Captain, he just showed up. <laughs> I really hope that all of our, um, you know, one -off guest players have to also roll a character, so we actually just end up sitting here waiting for someone to roll a sailor background. <laughs> yeah, that may happen. We're searching for the for the crew. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Great. All of us are just stuck on this land. <laughs> I just want to go swimming. <laughs> that, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. <laughs> Alright, awesome. Tamar's character is all set. Didn't have to go in, but I have it now. 
<laughs> Excellent. So one of the things that um, I really enjoyed um, about meeting up with everyone to um, create this new world was just, you know, the excitement and how much we really enjoyed, you know, just changing up some of the names of the um, of the states and, you know, and figuring out, you know, where I'm going to be from or no, I'm not actually from this this area. So it's it's given me a lot of ammo to um, to make this a, a good story. I don't know how you call it ammo. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like, like when, when, when my, my kid, kid, you know, she, she has, has a little camera in the hat, the Instax, like the old Polaroid type thing, and she calls it ammo. It makes, makes me think that bad things are coming out of it. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up is one of the things that will happen is I'm, I'm a big fan of the, uh, of the critical fail and critical um, hit cards. Now, for the critical hit, there's going to always be an option. You can either, you know, choose the card or do your normal, you know, critical critical stuff. Uh, but if you choose, you know, the card, then you may actually get some cool um, anime description of um, what you do to the to the creature that you're getting ready to slay. So, uh, I would say keep that in mind. Um, the critical fail is just going to be hilarious, more for me. <laughs> that... James is fun, is when we crit fail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, James, yeah, that's every GM re fun. Regarding, those critical, uh, regarding those critical success cards, um, the critical hit cards, I haven't seen the ones for Pathfinder 2, uh, but I recall some from uh, Starfinder. Most of the time, you still got the double damage, is that basically how the Pathfinder 2 ones work? Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, you do. Um, some of them have, unless it has um, something that's a little more gnarly, I would say. And it even has it broken down as, you know, unarmed strike, um, you know. Uh, magic. And... Magic or, um, you know, melee attack or um, ranged attack. So. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds Wonderful. I will say that I appreciate I, I appreciate that you mentioned that there will be insane shonen anime descriptions for the attacks. Oh yeah. As yeah. though we won't already have those for our attacks anyways. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we don't plan on yelling out the names of all of our attacks every time. Oh, absolutely. Well, we'll see. I mean, you guys can, I mean, I don't remember what they're called. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. You can make it whatever you Stacking want. Stacking grasp! Exactly. <laughs> you can make Those it are different. You kind of have to shout something with that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Produce flame! <laughs> <laughs> oh, so gonna love it. <laughs> I have um, a character in a um, in a, the, the the slithering ho uh, home game that we're doing. I'm playing a magus, and he does every he he punches everything, so he channels all of his spells through his fists. And every time he goes to attack, you know he jumps up into the air. And if you've ever seen Full Metal Alchemist, uh, yes. Louis arms, yeah. So every time he goes up to attack, he you know screams, you know, my family, you know, this is the, this is the secret technique passed down. Nice. Always very, very dramatic. I'm having a. I, I think that you guys may come across some um, some um, thugs that resemble some of the thugs from um, from JoJo. So I'm just gonna. I'll just leave that here for you guys to kind of chew on. <laughs> oh boy, there are gonna be stands. <laughs> One day I'll actually sit down and watch more of JoJo, but... Oh, dude, I... That's something that my daughter got me hooked on, and it was just ridiculous. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, this is so good. It's so ridiculous. So... The... 
the adorableness of a father daughter JoJo session. <laughs> oh, dude, we yeah, yeah, it was. We just binged all of it. It was just ridiculous. <laughs> oh, we got Philip. Good times. Philip's gone. Oh yeah, yeah. I I figured that he was going to have to step out. Yeah, he's actually on the road, so. Yeah, that's some dedication. It is. It is. To actually <laughs> chime in and say, "Hey, I'll I'll take the call from the road." <laughs> I remember having to do that. I was off at six o'clock for my second job and my D and D game started like at six. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a commute 45 minutes. So I was on the <laughs> discord oh, wow. call for 45 minutes. It's like, can you roll for me? <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. Uh, another home game. My fiance and I were both players and she was driving. So I was juggling both character sheets, uh, the Zoom call and navigation all on my port all on my port phone. I thought I was going to fry the damn thing. <laughs> Your phone's like I can't do it anymore, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the car charger? <laughs> the, the car charger's like I can't keep up. <laughs> I can't keep up. Oh, uh, as long as not one of those old school car chargers that would just you know. Spontaneously catch something on fire. Oh. <laughs> oh, plugged into the cigarette lighter. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I actually had that. I was like, "What's that smell?" And I looked down, and I'm like, <laughs> "What the hell?" <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like, that's what you get when you get the fi- the five dollar brand. Um, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I think you have to let Phil back in. He's coming back. We missed him. <laughs> All right. Let me grab him. But yeah, no, I, I, I've definitely begun sessions in the car as well. Like, it's like, oh my God, I have a work thing. <laughs> I get done with the work thing. I'll, you know, play on my way home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And like, especially during the area through the country, it sounds all robotic. Like, er, er, what? It's like, er, er. I have to drive halfway through my state. So, yeah, it's, it's like every bit of having to play online exacerbated. Mm-hmm. One of the things I do want to mention is because we are doing a lot of randomization and stuff and it's not a traditional like adventure path, um, I do expect the sessions to be about two, two and a half hours, you know, because, um, yeah, that will be too strainful i guess too stressful to try to randomize and do a whole lot of stuff in like a a non-ap type setting so but i guarantee you during that two and a half hours or so it's going to be um lots of lots of laughs i think that there's a lot to be said for a good tightly focused you know if we're playing like a solid two and a half hour session that just flows well Mm mm-hmm and then that way, people can say, hey, look, it's a Monday, but you're not going to feel like it's overtasking, and you're like, oh, I'm just tired. Because Mondays can suck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can the confirm. opposite. Monday is like, I'm finally up. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, oh. Friday, like, oh, I'm so done. I'm done with this week. <laughs> oh, no, I worked... Overnight last night, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., uh, no. I took a two-hour nap in my car, went to my other job, came I'm, home, took a two-hour nap, and now I've got another work shift after this. Dude, I, man, you're, you're just uh, uh, That's rough. Yeah. I don't know if I can do that anymore. Yeah, oh, no, I, I can't either. This is the last time I'm doing this. <laughs> Last time doing the work thing, not the last time playing this game. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be here for the game. You know, awesome. I'm getting rid of work. <laughs> I am actually getting rid of work. <laughs> so one thing that I'm really, really excited about is, you know, I've actually done a lot of recent um, purchases on Humble Bundle. And Humble Bundle has a lot of royalty-free music that was um, for adventures and stuff. So... 
Um, I'll try to make sure that it's not super loud, but we'll have some ambiance, definitely. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. Uh. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's like, I mean, 90% of, of this campaign. Oh, 100% um, of this game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it will be. And just We're uh, already in session 41. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> Everybody level up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, one of the other things, too, that um, I know I mentioned, but anyone that's um, watching, I'd like to mention again, is that I will during, um, I'm going to have something and I don't know how it's going to look, but I'm going to have, um, kind of like a, like a slot machine type excitement thing where it's like new scene. And when new scene kind of pops up, then I'm going to basically crowdsource, you know, players, even anyone that's, um, watching, um, for, um, things like. What colors do you see? You know, what um, smells, you know, but I want to, I think I'm going to keep it limited to like um, one word descriptors. So that way it's not like some bum over there pissing on, um, on this bard's um, leg. It's like, no, no. We're, I mean, we can combine it, but someone <laughs> has, but one person has to say someone pissing or like pissing. It's like, bum. Bard leg. Oh, okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we should have the caveat that it can be multiple words if it's a good pun or joke. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so like, if you're like, what does it smell like? And I go, Teen Spirit. I can use two words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So now though, Teen Spirit is removed from the available options because. Yeah. Because I ruined it and I, used it now. Yeah. I think the key Great. there is short phrase. Short um, phrase. No, no sentences, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> short phrase. So yeah, if you guys do want someone peeing on the bar, you'll have to work you'll have to work together in the group chat to figure out how to get it to work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I expect this this kind of mayhem, so um Trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted to kind of um, touch Can you on. Uh, maybe give an example of a randomization thing? -ish? Sure. So um, one of the things that I will be doing is um, I don't have it actually built yet, but it will be um, by the time we start. And I will have a random table for... Um, some NPC descriptors. So that will be interesting in itself. Um, the other thing too is as your, um, here's an example of one of the things that you'll have. So not just, you know, normal random encounters, but um, there will be random encounters with that makes sense. So like if you're mm -hmm. in a certain area, you know, you're going to actually have, um, creatures that could live in that area um, but also you will have some that maybe you know in one state it is primor um, primarily cat folk even though it's um, considered more rare um, they may have set up shop right there and that's their home so you'll see a lot more of them than you may of elves and so on so that part is going to be interesting because I haven't actually done that portion yet. And there's one other thing I do want to share. So this map um, generator that we used is called Asgard. And Asgard is a fantasy map generator. Um, it's um, on GitHub and you can download it and, um, and just use it. It's um, open source. It's great. Um, one of the things I love about it is that the developer also is working with another developer that does actual um, town maps. So, like for instance, this gives you some information like, okay, there's 916 um, people that live here for population and some other stuff. 
We don't have to keep any of this because this is our world. We can always change it. But I could click right here. And it takes me over to the Fantasy Cities and creates the town for me. So now we actually have a town that we can um, do our, you know, in-depth questing, you know, talk to beggars. We can all explore together. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. We're just going to be nuking towns off the map. Yeah, hey, split the party already. Sorry, I'm going to district. You guys can go somewhere else. And the best part is, anytime you do nuke it, I can literally go here and delete it. <laughs> well, I guess... Oh, God, Billy lives there! <laughs> He's like, that used to be my home. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Where's my parents? No. Shit, I think Tefra might have been in that town. Time to roll another character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There goes our ship. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll roll that sailor that we only slightly need now. <laughs> well, if that's the case, you know what would happen. You guys go on a rampage, destroy all the towns, then you wake up the next morning and it all resets. Mm. It's Groundhog yeah. Day. It was all a dream. It was all a dream. <laughs> Why do I keep reliving this day? Yeah. You can do better. Yep. <laughs> that's it. Ground, yo, Groundhog Day campaign. Let's go. <laughs> and and that would suck because technically. Um, Philip's uh, character is always doing Groundhog Day. <laughs> I'll wake up not knowing what's going on again. <laughs> oh, we're, 50 first, we were, we're, we're 50 first dates in the monk. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> oh. How do you do better if you never remember what you've done? <laughs> Well, if you do better than the minute before, then I guess you're still doing better. <laughs> In theory. I think at that point, there would be traces left behind each each cycle. You know, something new to find each cycle to uh, to create what's going on, uh, you know, to, uh, to find out and make it through and learn each time uh there was a doctor who episode like that where he was in the prison and he worked his way around the long way uh that was oh yeah that was freaky if you guys if you watched doctor who and you saw that you watched that episode uh or that movie it might have it might have been one of the movies but it was it was crazy where he just he kept playing the same loop but every time at the beginning of the loop he didn't know what was going on and found clues until he actually figured out the whole thing each time. Hmm. Time travel concepts. Woo. <laughs> yeah. And who knows what will happen. That very thing may happen. Not for the entire campaign, but there may be a, a session where there's some um, looping going on. So I think that's what I'm most excited about, just the sheer variety of storytelling that we'll be able to kind of dig into with this. Yeah, and there's going to be quite a bit. And I'm, I'm excited for when we start to um, pull in guest players, too, because that's going to throw, <laughs> I won't say necessarily a monkey wrench, but it's going to, it could be a good thing or it could be a really bad thing. <laughs> Time will tell. Every time we we meet somebody, it's going to be the running gag. Uh, do you know how to sail a ship? <laughs> do you know how to boat, please, sir? <laughs> do you have skills in nautical? It's like what? <laughs> the worst part is we get like halfway out, and then the character's gone. We're like, oh no, what are we going to do? It's like who's going to finish this? <laughs> Next go north. Go north. The <laughs> north is north. that way. <laughs> north is that way. Hey, I, I I think my guy will know the direction part. I think that's that's about where he he, he ends. My, when it comes to I, I have a spell. Let's Someone go please have your direction. <laughs> oh, there's gonna. I'm telling you, I might <sighs> I might bring in a One Direction um group of bards. Oh God. Oh God. Oh, God. And then you guys will be sad. 
Be careful of the puns. Be careful what you what you you know. Wish oh God. For. Bad things can happen. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna, maybe I'm, yeah. break them in, but maybe that session involves us breaking them up so that you know that could that the, the dwarf well. Harry style can go off on a great solo career. I mean, I I'm just that. sad for myself that I, I understand exactly what you're saying and that I know the <laughs> reference. Like, that's bad. And like, my eight year old is obsessed. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that because my, uh, my niece is going to be super heartbroken. Oh, oh can't it's do like, it. It's like, oh, you missed a great session. It's like, we did this and did this. It was based on one direct. You did it. It's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> We uh, broke uh, them up. <laughs> Whatever we do in game <laughs> ends up being real. <laughs> in the past. <laughs> Don't worry, it's the it's reverse cool. butterfly effect. We've done it, and then that causes a ripple, and that changes history, right? Oh, dear God. Oh, <laughs> now we're getting into some real heady concepts. I, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> this, this doesn't sound like fun anymore. <laughs> Now Every time you add hurts. time travel, it becomes less fun, even though it seems like it should be more fun. I know, I know. Oh. Just seen way yeah. too many movies, and yeah, no, can't do it. Stepped on the twig, we changed history. Damn it. <laughs> that twig was important. <laughs> it's supposed to be mostly excellent, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's some wild stallions up in here. <laughs> Just horsing around. Oh. <laughs> oh man. I say nay to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just named my horse. Oh. There's, there's, oh, speaking please. of, I do get a familiar <laughs> level two. <laughs> oh, that'll be cool. Uh, I don't know what to do with that one. <laughs> Uh, roll a random character for it. I, it's I, just a I very really, tiny person. I was going to do a little pixie, like uh, like Tinkerbell. Oh, that's right. You were talking yeah. about that. That would be hilarious. Yeah. She's like, where the hell am I? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you people? <laughs> yeah, it's always on her waist. <laughs> well, someone's oh, so going to be a little feisty. Yeah, she's going to be a, a slight a tween like, major. Try to touch her, she'll bite the <laughs> finger like so hard. <laughs> what do you say? Like, I said it's a teenager pixie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah. All right. I do have to get going to work, unfortunately, guys. So mm -hmm. I do need to get going. Well, I do think um, that this is a great time to um, wrap it up because I think we've pretty much covered everything. And in two weeks, we'll be back um, for the actual gameplay of the Dungenerates with Please. some working um, Zoom um, picks and um, not just some um, avatars. Sounds good. Hell yeah. Oh, shit. That's my That's really game. great. Yep. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for joining. I know it was only about an hour or so, but, I mean, this is session 0 0.11111, so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, what do you expect? All right. <laughs> and um, thanks to um, Roll to Roll for um, letting me um, throw this thing together. Um, roll 20, because um, that's how we roll. And and for all the um, creators out there um, making content um, for everyone, for Game Masters and other storytellers to use, um, thank you. This is awesome. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, dudes. Bye.